one of the big differences of you know, my mentality and, and working around these older cars. You know, I've said this before to people that, that my intent is to be the the last person who works on this engine in my lifetime. That I'll be I'll be long gone when the next time it comes apart. So I have this sort of long-term view that I want everything to be as perfect as I can. Hello, I'm Simon. I am a drivetrain restoration specialist at Road Scholars and uh, my specialty is uh, four cam engines uh, as well as uh, transmission. I started off with the, you know, the factory manual. I read it and I read some books that we had on the four cam and, and tried to make sense of it all. But it's not until you start putting you know, hands-on metal that you actually start learning. And so what I did was I took the original factory manual and I actually scanned it as a PDF so I could have it anywhere I went. And I printed off a copy, which I have bound. And so whenever I am figuring stuff out, learning um, anything in the book, you know, the, the cheap copy I call it, it has all of the, all of my, I guess, brain droppings, um, as George Carlin would say. And so, whenever I come across, a, you know, an anomaly or a piece of information that I think is, is critical or important, like this one, for instance, which is regarding the 1600 uh, road car engines um, that do not have um, clearance on the piston for the spark plug, they use a special park, spark plug, and there's a note in the book about it. And so I supplement that um, or highlight it to make it more prominent. If I keel over, somebody will get some advantage from it. It's a way of trapping my, um, my thoughts and my findings. You know, I, I make specific notes about specific cars. and it, This is kind of like my Bible, as it were, um, in terms of facts and figures and findings. So that's one of the things I do um, that, that may pan out and, and be helpful in the future. A lot of what we do is restoration. We try and use, I pr pretty much always use the original parts where I can, but I try and employ modern technology when I can too. Like I said, it's been a long time since these engines were designed and sealing technology and things like that um, have come along. So a lot of the specifications for these engines were built years ago, 50, 70, 80 years ago. And times have changed. Even the technology, fuel technology, for instance, you can run a lot more timing than you could back in the day because the fuel technology is more stable. You, you're dealing with a consistent quality um, of fuel, so you know you can you can you can stray from the original data, I guess, as well. The original specifications aren't necessarily always valid, so you can set your timing differently to the book and it isn't wrong it just isn't the way they would have done it because they we have a different set of parameters now kind of thing so anything inside that you know has a bit of has a bit of flexibility because you can't see it um, um, if I can make an improvement I will experience teaches you that just just because there's a piece of data written in a book doesn't mean there isn't a little bit of wiggle room and that you can sometimes make compromises to get a better end result. Um, you know, a lot of these deal with a lot of the competition engines. There we go. A lot of the competition engines were built for competition. So they were, weren't built for the road. They weren't built to be flexible or drivable. They were built to be wide open throttle down the Mulsanne straight. And that's not always suitable for the way our clients drive their cars. So sometimes you have to you know, change the jetting, you know, even detune the engine a little bit so that it's more docile, more drivable on the road, because they're not always driven flat out at the track. There we go. When we started working on these cars, everybody was trying to tune the engines and make them idle well and all, you know, they were tuning them as if they were road cars and I had to explain to them no, you know, there's, you can't set the base, you can't set the idle on a, uh, on a uh, 550 at 800 RPM. If you look in the manual, it says the idle is 1500 RPM because it's not designed for road use. Completely different, you know, logic um, on a race car than there is. So puttering around, slow speed, race cars aren't designed for that. You know, you're lucky to get, you know, moving through a paddock area 
once you get on the track, it's wide open throttle. So you, you have to make, you have to realize that, and you have to make compromise. Again, you have to know that uh, that's an unreasonable expectation sometimes for a car, um, or a race car. So it's, it's just some familiarity and some experience, I think, that, that I bring to these situations more than anything. Um, I'm not always right, but even if I make a mistake, I feel like I learned something. So um, I, get, I guess I get more right as I go along. <laughs>